Go forward for your next truck or SUV and find an easier way to buy with Woodhouse Ford today. And experience the convenience of buying with Woodhouse Ford. Lease a 2023 Ford Escape Active for $397 per month for 48 months and 7,500 miles per year. First payment and $299 stock fee due at signing. Security deposit waived. Tax title license extra with approved credit. Expires 1204-2023. The news in 20 minutes. Every 20 minutes. This is LBC News. 11.40 is the time now. Let's go straight to the United States, straight to Washington, D.C., and straight to Simon Marks. Simon, tell us the state of play. Well, Martin, as we predicted on the programme yesterday, we are waking up here on Wednesday morning with an uncertain outcome to America's midterm elections because we still do not know the final makeup of either the House of Representatives nor the Senate, nor do we yet know which party is going to control uh, those two respective houses of Congress, it continues to look likely that the Republicans are going to end up with a majority in the House of Representatives, although it will be smaller than the majority I think that they had hoped to achieve. We're waiting for a number of results still to come in, including several closely contested races uh, in California, so it may be several hours before uh, the Republicans officially can declare victory and say that they have uh, at least prized one of the two houses of Congress (coughs) away from uh, the Democrats. As far as the Senate is concerned, uh, as you will know, going into this election, it was split 50-50 between the Republicans and the Democrats. That means that one party needed to flip at least one seat in order to claim a majority in the legislature. Well, one seat has flipped, and it's the seat in Pennsylvania, where the Democrat John Fetterman has triumphed in his election battle over Trump-backed candidate Dr. Mehmet Oz. So that's a big result for the Democrats. However, there are other seats still uh, where the votes are being counted, uh, where the Republicans uh, might find themselves able to flip a seat. And we're paying particular attention to Nevada, 75% of the votes in there. The Republican candidate Adam Laxalt currently in the lead with 50% of the vote over the incumbent incumbent Democrat Catherine Cortez Masto with 47% of the vote. If that seat flips, that will once again tie the body up 50-50, at which point all eyes will be on Georgia. And um, if I was a betting man, I would suggest that it is highly possible that the future of the US Senate is going to be decided by voters in the state of Georgia, um, not in yesterday's, <coughs> excuse me, not in yesterday's today's election, but in uh, a possible runoff that may be needed there in four weeks' time, because looking at the numbers, there are wafer-thin margins separating the Democrat incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock from his Trump-backed challenger, Herschel Walker, and neither candidate has scored more than 50% of the vote. There's a third-party candidate there siphoning some votes away from them, a libertarian. Uh, Now, under the rules of the road in Georgia, if neither candidate tops 50%, there has to be a runoff between the two top scoring candidates. So we may well be seeing a runoff in Georgia between Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker. And that runoff will perhaps determine which party ends up controlling the US Senate. Now, having said all of that, there is no question that this is a much better set of results than Democrats had dared to dream of. And they are results that buck the historic trends. President Biden went into this election, uh, a man uh, with uh, uh, deep difficulties as far as approval ratings concerned were concerned, down in the 40 percent uh, range, uh, mid 40s, uh, with inflation, of course, besetting the country, uh, voters telling pollsters that their number one issue was the economy, uh, that uh, issues that the Democrats were championing, championing, including uh, democracy and abortion rights were taking a back seat to their anxieties over the economy. And yet, the Democrats do not appear to have lost anything like the kind of ground that past Democrat presidents uh, in similar circumstances have lost. If you go back to Barack Obama or Bill uh, Clinton, they, in midterm election, 
Commons both lost scores of seats yeah. uh, in the House of Representatives. Shellacking. Wasn't it? Shellacking. I learned that word from, from, from Barack, Barack Obama. Obama. Yeah. yeah. And, that's, and that's not what we're seeing. The red wave that Donald Trump uh, promised and called for has not exhibited itself on a national scale. Now, it has exhibited itself in some states. Florida, particularly, has gone entirely Republican with a massive election, re-election win for Governor Ron DeSantis there, which will immediately, is already fueling talk of his viability as a presidential candidate for the Republicans in 2024. Uh, as for Joe Biden, I mean, these numbers that we've got so far will rekindle his hopes, I think, of running for re-election in two years' time, uh, because certainly he can take comfort from the fact that this hasn't been the drubbing uh, that just a few months ago uh, all the polls indicated was an absolute inevitability uh, as uh, Joe Biden's approval ratings sank and uh, voters indicated that they just weren't feeling uh, the benefits of the domestic legislation that he insists is going to change life in America for decades to come. Is it premature though, Simon, to say this is the beginning of the end of the Trump phenomenon and the democracy deniers and the January 6th deniers this could be some kind of turning point? Well, I think it is too early to say that because there have been some major election victories for Trump-backed candidates uh, overnight um, and some of them absolutely, many of them absolutely have uh, adhered themselves to Donald Trump's uh, entirely false claims about uh, the American electoral system being fraudulent. If you take a look down in Arkansas, that state's new governor is going to be Sarah Huckabee Sanders. If the name sounds familiar, it should be. She's the former White House press secretary secretary who lied relentlessly to reporters and the public on Donald Trump's behalf when she was slavishly loyal to him at the White House. Uh, that is a huge win for Republicans. I mean, Arkansas was always going to have a Republican governor, but it's a big win for the Trump wing of the party. If you look at Ohio, the Trump-backed Senate candidate J.D. Vance has easily won that state. Democrats really hoped they might be able uh, to flip it. Um, and that's that's another big win for a candidate very close to Donald Trump. Uh, now, there have been some other stunning losses. Um, some listeners may be aware of the pistol-packing congresswoman from Colorado, Lauren Bobart, um, one of the more out-there uh, Republicans on the fringes uh, of um, right-wing politics. She has lost her re-election race in Colorado, and that's going to be a big blow uh, to the Trump wing in the House of Representatives. But but look, I mean, Donald Trump still, uh, at this point, has uh, continued to portray himself throughout the campaign and even last night as the effective leader of the opposition. I think what these results do mean is that we're going to see a very, very competitive primary contest on the Republican side uh, to select the party's next presidential nominee. And it is not um, axiomatic that Donald Trump becomes that nominee. But whoever becomes that nominee is going to have to find a way of speaking to the conspiracy theorists who make up a substantial percentage uh, of Republican Party supporters and indeed candidates in this election cycle and finding a way of trying to adhere them to more traditional Republican values. I mean, that that's going to be a massive challenge. But when Donald Trump announces, as we presume he still will next Tuesday, his presidential bid, I think all eyes will very rapidly be on Governor Ron DeSantis is down in the sunshine state of Florida and the question will be, well, how soon does he make it clear that he is going to get into the race for the presidency and there will be other candidates out there that, uh, that join that race as well. Simon Marks, thank you very much indeed. Simon, live for us in Washington, D.C. Just coming up on 10 to midday. Who do you trust to repair your car, truck, van, or SUV? Rely on the personal experience of people who've had their vehicles serviced by Myers Auto Service. Hi, this is Tracy from Omaha. I've had everything from my motor replaced to oil changes. They always tell me what's wrong with the car and how long it can go before it needs to be fixed. And they've always been honest and fair with their pricing. At Myers Auto Service, we don't want to be everyone's mechanic, just yours. Just north of 140th off Old L Street and at MyersAutoService.com.